Welcome to Mission Independent Baptist Church, our Sunday afternoon service. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And we got the people here today. Thank you for the people. Bless the people who are here and uh, bless your word. We're just singing songs, lifting your name up, the name of Jesus. <clears throat> Let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you. I thank you for the people here. I, I thank you that people came and want to hear your word and sing songs and glorify you, Lord. I praise you and Lord, just give me the words to speak. Your Holy Spirit, speak your words and not mine. And just bless this service and that you'd get all the glory. In Jesus' precious name, amen. All right, we're going to sing, Are You Washed in the Blood? Song number 124. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in his grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? When the bridegroom cometh, will your robes be white? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Will your soul be ready for the mansion's bright and be washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin, and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Lay aside your garments that are stained with sin and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? I think we sang the last bird twice, but that's okay. Give glory to God. He wants to hear it. Amen. That's a beautiful. Hey, lay aside them garments that are stained with sin. Any sin in your life, kick it out. Get it out. Ask Jesus to help you. Be, keep it washed in the blood. Amen. 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 Oh, what a good day today. A good, good uh, service this morning. Had some food. And now we're going to take and talk about a little glimpse of Jesus. What we all need. We need a little glimpse of Jesus in our life, in our daily life. We need to see Jesus every day. You know, we can just, just get a little glimpse of him. I think we're going to be okay. Amen. Amen. You know. You know what? Do people, what, are, what do people see when they see you? When they see you, do you think you're you're fun to be around? Did you you lift up the name of Jesus? That you know that something about you is different than the world. That's what we should be. We got to be people of the book. We got to be different. We got to be different than the world. The Bible says, "Get out of the world. Be separate. Be separate." We should be people after being around people. Get be, people should see us and say, "Hey, I got a little glimpse of Jesus today." Amen. Amen. The lady last night told me when I left work, she goes, oh, I know about you. You're a good guy. I said, no, I'm not good. Only Jesus is good. And I said, read the, the, the gospel tracks I got there. She says, I will. 
So praise God. Amen. We're gonna. I'm gonna teach in First uh, John three, just a few verses, and we're gonna get a little glimpse of Jesus. First John three, one through three. And I'm gonna go all over the Bible and we'll get a little glimpse of Jesus in our lives and from the Bible. Amen. 1 John 3, 1 through 3. And it says, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is, and every man that hath his hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. You know what? God's coming. When he comes, we're going to be perfect. We're going to be made just like Jesus Christ. We are the sons of God. We should be shining like Jesus. We're not perfect yet, but one day we will be one day. Amen. When Jesus comes, Jesus said, if you've seen the Father, you've seen me. Amen? So, I mean, through Jesus, if we know Jesus, we know the Father and the Holy Spirit lives in us. Look at John 14, 9. John 14, 9. You know, we need to search the Scriptures daily to get a little glimpse of Jesus. You know, Jesus was concealed in the Old Testament. He's revealed in the New Testament. But this whole book... This whole Bible is God talking about Jesus Christ to us, for us to find Jesus, and, this, and, the, and once we do find him, to live our lives, what he wants us how to live it. Amen? So let's look at John 14, 9. John 14, 9 says, Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long with you, and yet thou hast not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me has seen the Father, and how sayest thou, show us the Father? You know, all these people saying, oh, well, you know, God, uh, Jesus is not the Father. You know, Jesus is in the Father, and the Father's in Jesus, and the Holy Spirit's living in, the, in us, who's, who are people who are, people who are saved through Jesus Christ. You know, we have to make the truth be known to people who, who differ. You know, the God's Word is God's Word. I'll sit down with anybody. We'll study the matter out. Um, another matter people were just talking recently was uh, about hell. Why would a loving God, they said, or let let you just burn up when he, you'd suffer and then he, you'd come back to God? But I don't know, Revelation 20.10 Revelation 20, says, The devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Let's take a look at that, Revelation 20.10. Yeah, you have to always check in your Bible. You know what? I may say something, and you know what? Maybe uh, I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong, but you got to look. Revelation 20.10. Hello. 20.10 says, And the devil that deceived them was cast in the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. I don't know how long. How long is forever and ever? Does it sound like they're going to be let go forever and ever? And then Jesus also says they'll be wailing and gnashing of teeth. <clears throat> and it says where the worm dieth not. So the worm dieth not. So that means it's not you're not it's going to be a torture forever and ever. But they're saying that there's a movement going on now saying that God's well, he wouldn't let you just burn, you know, there's, there's going to suffer forever, but you know, that I don't know. We'll have to study the matter out more, but from what I read in the Bible, you know, hell, hell, you're separated God, separated from God for eternity, and you're burning forever and ever, and it, the torment never quenches. The, the worm dieth not, and it says there'll be wailing and gnashing of teeth. But if you're in heaven, it says you're going to be with the Lord Jesus Christ forever. No sickness, no suffering, no pain. You're going to be happy, and there's going to be no snow sorry. God's going to wipe all your tears away. So it'll be a perfect place. But the people who didn't trust Jesus Christ are going to be in an unperfect place. It makes sense to me. That's what the Bible says, I think. Verse 15. Yeah. A Revelation 10, 15? Uh, 2015. Revelation 2015. Let's, let me look at that, too. Yeah, check it out. It says, 
and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. There you go. No, lake of fire, you're in fire, you're burning, you're, you're in fire. You may be swimming, but you're burning. You know, it's not water. Water puts out fire. It says a lake of fire. So, you know, we're, we, we're in uh, 1 John 1, 1 John 1, chapter 3, verses 1 through 3, and I'm talking a little glimpse of Jesus. We're getting a little glimpse, and hopefully we can get a little glimpse of Jesus. You know, we need to clean up anything in our lives daily that doesn't look like Him. Let's look at Micah 7.10. Micah 7.10. Micah? Micah 7.10. So it's like maybe three books before Matthew. Two or three or four books before Matthew. I remember one time I was looking for Micah, and man, he hid out on me. I couldn't find him. He was hiding out. I called out the verse, and I was looking for it and looking for it. I couldn't find Micah, but I found him. Micah 7.10. It says, Then she that is my enemy shall see it, and shall shame cover her head when she said unto me, Where is the Lord thy God? Mine eyes shall behold her, and now shall she be trodden as the mire of the streets. You know what? God in you, you know what, he sees your enemies. God sees your enemies before you, before you, God sees our enemies before we can see our enemies, and you know what, He's, he, he protects us, he keeps us safe from them, or he'll warn us, you know, your enemies, you know, our flesh, our own flesh is the biggest enemy of us, our own flesh, because it, it's a daily fight, because we want, we don't want to come to church, we don't want to I mean, your body, I'm tired, I've been working all week, but you know what? Your spirit says, go to church, you got to serve God, give, give honor and glory to God. And we come, you know, and we preach, and we teach, and we, we sing songs, we, we praise God, you know. We want God to bless us, you know, in our, while we're on this earth, amen? Amen. You know, amen. You're our enemies, our enemies, see that God says if, you know, you serve Him, He'll make peace with your enemies, your enemies will even be peaceful to you. You know, when you, when you, you know, when you open up your Bible, you got to look for Jesus. You see him on every single page. He's on every page. Like that one preacher said, he said, when you look for Jesus, he goes, open your, he goes, when you open your Bible, look for Jesus, he goes, you'll find him on every page. And you look for him. And the more I, more I look in the Bible, the more I see Jesus. You know, I look, see him in the Old Testament, the New Testament. We get a little glimpse of him here and there. And you know what? It's going to make, it helps us daily. A little glimpse of Jesus. Uh, look at Hebrews 12, 2. We need, to get, we need a little glimpse of Jesus every day. This world needs a little glimpse of Jesus. Amen? Yes. I mean, they're getting, it's getting, uh, they got this, uh, it's scary. a lot of sin festivals going on, a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Hebrews 12, 2. I can get there. Hebrews 12, 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. You know, we're looking for Jesus. I want to see him come back. I hope he comes back soon. We're not going to miss anything. What are you going to miss there? Yeah. We'll be in heaven for eternity. Amen. Are you going to Nothing. miss what's Nothing. going on in the world with the politics and the mayor here and everything. You know, we need to pray. We pray for the police. We pray for the fire department. Pray for our mayor. Pray for our leaders. Pray that they'll do godly things, that they'll study this word of God, and that they'll get saved, and they'll trust the Lord Jesus Christ, and then make great decisions, and make good laws, and they'll make godly laws. But if it's right now, you know, the Bible says in the end times that people will wax worse and worse. So people aren't going to get better. It says in the Bible, and it says they'll call evil good and good evil. And where we're at right now in society, people are calling evil good and good evil. You know, I'd say you go to church, oh, you ought to be put in jail. They say you're 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 evil, you know, you're 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 contradicting all the evil stuff we like, you know. You know, it says, man, what is it saying in John? It says uh, in John, let's go to John real quick. John 1, John 1, John 1, 
It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. So it was the light. And it said, the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. So darkness was that is the opposite of light. He said he was, uh, and then it says, he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. So the world didn't, you know, he came into the world to save sinners like me and you, and you know what, he did. If we trusted him and repented, he saved us, but people don't want to come. It says he came unto his own, and his own received them not. That's the people in Israel, the children of Israel. They didn't believe he's Messiah, but they will one day. You know, every knee's going to bow and every tongue's going to confess to God the Father that Jesus is Lord to God the Father. You know, it says he, he's the light, and you know what? Men don't want to come to the light because their deeds are evil. I think that's Luke, maybe Luke 1. I'm not sure. Hold on. I'm just going to look here. Luke. John 3.19. John 3.19? Mm -hmm. Let me look at John 3.19. Let's look at John 3.19. Yeah, John three nineteen. It says, and this is the yeah. condemnation. You know, that's like the damnation. That, that light is coming to the world. You know, lights come. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. You know, men in this world, men and women, they like darkness because their deeds are evil. They come to the light. They got to give up all, all the sinful stuff. And then it says, for everyone that do with evil hateth the light. They hate the light. They can't stand Jesus. They can't stand anybody who represents Jesus. They hate you if you try to give them a gospel track, if you bring up the name of Jesus. And it says, neither cometh to the light. So they're not coming to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. So unless he realizes that, hey, my way's going wrong here. I need to turn from darkness and turn to the light and come to the, you know get a glimpse of Jesus. If you get a glimpse of Jesus, you're going to get a glimpse of light and you're going to want to come to the light. If you're stuck in the middle of a forest, in the middle of the forest at nighttime, it's pitch dark. You got no flashlight. You can't see nothing. So you're looking for a way out. All of a sudden, you see a car light through the through the trees. You're going to start heading towards the light. And you know what? It's probably a road. And you go, hey, I need a ride. I'm stuck here. I've been lost. Now you're found. You know, Same thing with Jesus. You're in darkness. You see the light. You, you, you get a little light. You come to the light. You get, it gets more brighter. And when you come all the way, you come to the light. He saves your soul. But you got to come. you got to come. you got to turn from the darkness. Turn to the light. Get a little glimpse of Jesus. Turn to the light. Uh, what else does it say here? Everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, let his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth. So if you do truth, if you try to try to you try to live for Jesus, you're trying to do things right, you're trying to, you know what, you're trying to just just do what God wants you to do, you're gonna have problems in this life. But it says here, but he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be manifest that they are wrought in God. You know what? They're wrought in God. If they're wrought in God, then they're worked out through God, and they'll be good. Amen? It says, After these things came Jesus and the disciples, they came to Judea, and he tarried with them when he was baptizing. But you know what? They seen, they seen the light. Actually, John the Baptist, he was the forerunner before Jesus. He talked about the light to the people, told them the light was coming. He said, There's one coming that you know is not worthy. I could even tie his shoes. He said, He's coming, but... I, get, I baptize you with water. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And when he baptizes you with the Holy Ghost, you're set free. You're away from darkness. You're in light. You got a glimpse of Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> Let's look at Isaiah 45.22. Isaiah 45.22. I mean, Jesus is, you get a glimpse of Jesus. Everywhere you look in this Bible, you see a glimpse of Jesus. And, you know, the whole Bible is God's, you know what, people say, well, God made men write about, wrote in the Bible, you know, to, to, to told the world, you know, about, to tell what he told. It is what he told, but God actually told them to write. God spoke to them, and they wrote what he said to do, and it's about Jesus for us, how, for how we're supposed to find Jesus. This whole book's about Jesus. We just got to seek, search, and find, and you'll find them. Look at Isaiah 45, 22. Isaiah 45, 22. It says, Looking unto me, and you be saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. 
You know, there is no other God. There is no other God. There's the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And the only way to the Father, John 14, 6 says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. And it says, look unto me and ye be saved. So if you look to Jesus, if you get a glimpse of him, and you turn to the light and you want, you want him, you ask him to save your soul, you repent of your sins, you turn to him and let him shine, shine his light into you. He, he takes that darkness, he takes that sin out of you, and he puts righteousness in you. Because we have no righteousness in us. Like the Father put our sin upon him. The Father said he didn't have any sin in him. He put his the sin upon him. So he put the sin upon him and he died. But he lived perfect. So he was able to make that payment. So God, Jesus Christ, he's the, you know, he's our light. He's our savior. He's our, he, we had a little glimpse of Jesus all through the Old Testament and in, through the, in, in the New Testament reveals him. You know, if you look for Jesus, you'll find him. A lot of people in the world, they're looking for happiness, but they really should be looking for Jesus. If you were looking for a little, for a, a glimpse of Jesus, they'd come to him because they see we, we would help them, but they don't. They already got problems with alcoholism, drugs, uh, women, pornography, uh, just stealing, robbery, you know, robbing people, carjacking people. It's just... You know, they, if they could just get a little glimpse of Jesus, it would help them. Amen? Amen. You know, Amen. Jesus in the Old Testament was concealed, and in the New Testament, he's revealed. You know, if we can only get a glimpse. We need to build our lives on Jesus by studying his word, his holy Bible, the King James Bible. I believe Jesus has got a preserved, inspired word of God, which he could kept, and I believe it's his King James Bible. And I believe every word in there is what God wants us to know from cover to cover. And it'll help you. It'll help you. If we get a little glimpse of Jesus through the word, it'll help us daily. Uh, you know, getting closer to him and how, how he is. We've we got to get closer to God and not closer to the world. Look at Jude, Jude 1, 20 to 22. Jude, go to Jude, last book before Revelation. Jude 1, 20 to 22. Jude 1, 20 to 22. It says, But ye, beloved, so that's the people are saved, building up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life, and of some have compassion, making a difference. And even go to the next verse, and others saved with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the spot. Even the garment spotted by the flesh. You know what? Sometimes, you know what? We got to have compassion. I see people yesterday had compassion. You got to have compassion on people. If you're truly saved, you know what? What they're doing, you may not like, but you got to have compassion and tell them about Jesus Christ, you know? And all there, sometimes they're in bed. You like pulling them out of the fire. You might have to stick in to help grab them. You grab them, you may get burned a little, but you pull them out and say, hey, you got to come to the light. You're falling, you're go, go falling away. You're sinking, you're drowning, you're drowning in sin. You're going to be dead soon, you're going to be in hell. You, I don't want to see you go there. Like the one guy told me, he said, man, he said, you really, he goes, man, he goes, I needed to hear that. And this guy, I don't know, I don't know, I've never seen this guy before in my life. He said, thank you. He said, pray for me. And he said, pray right now. I start praying and he gave me a hug, man. He gave me a hug. My brother Mickey's ever giving me a hug, that guy. He goes, you might, he goes, you might have saved me or something. As he said, he walked away. He had some bottles of alcohol and uh, pray, pray for him. Yeah, God knows who he is. God could save him. You know, we need, we need to build ourselves up on Jesus. You know, others save with fear. You know, some people, you, you know, you may think, oh, I can't, God can't help them. He can. He can. But we got to be willing to be used for him and make a difference. we got to have compassion. And some, like it says, pulling him out of the fire, hating even the garment that's spotted by the flesh, even a little bit, even their garment, even if they're not, they're, you know, something that they're doing is wrong, we got to get them out of that, take them out of there. You know, are you making a difference? You know, I hope you are. We, we should be making a difference. Are, the, are we living the way we should be living, you know? You know, I come to church this and people say, oh, well, you know, uh, most people, Christians, go home and their kids watch them during the day or during the week. And, man, are they, they're not living for God. And there's kids, ah, they're phony. Ah, they ain't living for, you know what? We got to be examples. We have to, we got to keep ourselves in check throughout the whole week. We And if we do something wrong, we got to ask people to forgive us if they 
hear something or see so hey forgive me i didn't mean to see, say that because otherwise you're going to say what's the sense of you know trust in jesus they're going to act like them we can't do that we got to be different we're supposed to be different god tells us to be different <clears throat> you know is more time of your life shining for christ or is it shining for the world you know we got to shine for christ or shining for yourself you know we don't want to shine from ourself you know we can't please god in the flesh we cannot nobody can please god in the flesh only in the spirit when we're doing things that t tell people about him and how he can save them. Go to Romans 8, 8 through 10. Romans 8, 8 through 10. Romans 8 through 10. Yeah, yesterday, so many people in, just in sin and sin and sin and just watching that grieve me, but... I could try to talk to a few of them, but I couldn't talk to all. I was at work, but, you know, it's, it, it grieves me to see, especially young people, because sometimes they're in sin and they don't even really know it. They know it's not right, but they're not, they don't, you know, they're not 100%, and, you know, they could just be touching it, you know. Their garment's touching it, and if you grab them and take them out before they d jump in, you know, now they're with, they did this, they did this, now there's no going back. I mean, they got troubles in their lives they got all kinds of things but you got to get them get them back to christ tell them to trust jesus christ we got to try to get them with young people young people away and get them away from all the nonsense in the world the world just wants to destroy the d world and the devil want to destroy all the young people they don't want them to know about jesus christ that they can be saved that they can get to heaven or that they can ever have a, even a meaningful life here they want them to be caught up in all kinds of sins look at romans 8 8 through 10 and it says so then they that are in the flesh cannot please god but ye are not in the flesh but in the spirit so if so it so be that the spirit of god dwell in you now if any man have not the spirit of christ he is none of his and if christ be in you the body is dead because of sin but the spirit is life because of righteousness so we got to live in the spirit and not fulfill the lusts of the flesh if you got the spirit of god you can't overcome the flesh and you know what you don't you don't live in the flesh, you know what, we're gonna we're in the world, but we're not of the world. That's the way we should be. We need to put away the things of the flesh that would offend God. Or anyone who's you know looking you know, anybody who's looking for him, if somebody's seeking and then all of a sudden we're doing something wrong and they're looking and you tell them about Jesus and they see you doing something wrong, and they go, What's the what's the hope? This guy's like me. You know, so we have to be very careful. You know, we can't be overtaken by the world, you know, our our faults God sees and you know what if we ask him to forgive our faults he forgives them and you know other people are watching us people are watching you 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 all of us they're watching us they you know what they they look they're looking for the truth they're looking for the truth and you know what if they get a little glimpse of Jesus out of it they might find it amen let's go to Galatians 6 1 Galatians 6 1 Galatians 6 1. It says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, so if you're all overtaken, something wrong, did something, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. You know what? And then it says in verse 2, Bear ye ones. Bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. You know what? I got faults, you got faults in the flesh. And if we make a mistake or do something, we have to help the brethren, help each other. You, you, I confess my sin, we pray to God, forgive me, and we move on. And you know what? Or if you're, you can't be like, oh, they're doing this, they're doing this, we're doing this. Maybe I'm doing this now. All of a sudden I start doing it. You know what? We cannot, we cannot condemn people. Who, love, who are saved, but we have to help restore spiritually. We have to rose restore. Pray for them. I pray for so many people. You know, I hope they, you know, they come to Jesus Christ, or if they 
they have come into Christ that they get out of the world and get out of the flesh and get back to Christ. Bear ye one one another's burdens. So we got to bear each other's burdens. You know, I got burdens, you got burdens. If you need help, ask me. I'll help you, I'll help you. But we got to pray for each other. That's the number one thing. God hears prayers and, you know, fulfill the law of Christ. You know, we have to, we have to really build on Jesus. We got to keep him in our lives daily. Study, pray. You know what? Call each other. If you're in doubt and something you're going to do something that you shouldn't do, maybe, give a call to somebody and talk. And, hey, let's come over. Let's get together. Let's do a Bible study. Let's do something. You know, we can't get overtaken by the world, you know. That's what the devil wants. The devil wants to make the people of God useless for God because they're living in the flesh. You know, most a lot of churches I see, they're in the flesh. you got to be living for God. you got to have tracks in your pocket. How are you going to tell something about Jesus if you got no tracks in your pocket? Take some tracks. we got so many tracks, and put them in your pocket. You know, we tell, tell people about Jesus, and you get a little glimpse. Get a little glimpse of him. You know, the golden rule, what is it? Do unto others as others do unto you. So, is that right? Is that correct, the golden rule? Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Let me, I had it written down. Wait a minute. Maybe I got that wrong there. Hold on. <laughs> I don't know. It's a golden rule. I'm not going to look right now. You know, we got a li little glimpse of. We got look at Galatians 5:25. Go one page over. Galatians 5:25. Okay. okay, hold on. No, we got to walk. Galatians 5:25. Galatians 5.25 says, If we live in the Spirit, let's, let us also walk in the Spirit. So we live in the Spirit. we got to walk. Our walk in life should be in the Spirit of God. And, you know, it's, what does it say? Uh, go up to page 20, or uh, go up to verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit, this is what we should be living in. We're happy. We're saved. Amen. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. So love, joy, and peace. Those are nice things. You should be happy all the time. Amen. Amen. Long-suffering. Oh, and that one, that's a tough one. You know, people give you a hard time all the time, and they get on your nerves, and you don't really like them. But you got to be long-suffering. So God says be long-suffering. Gentleness. So you got to be gentle. You got to try to be gentle. You got to be... You know, come in a way to them, you know, sharing God's love, but be gentle. Goodness and faith. So you got to have, be goodness. You got to have stuff you're doing. You have good, good in you. You have faith. You have faith in Jesus Christ. Meekness. So you got to stay humble, stay lowly. Have your temper. Don't, don't, temperance. Don't get angry. Try not to get angry at people. It's, you know, God, you know what? Because think about it. God died for you, me, and the sins of the whole world. Who were we before we got saved? I was, I was a bad, not a good person in God's eyes, and He had, He had compassion, He had long suffering, gentleness, He had everything that I needed, and I got it now, so I should use it. Amen. Amen. So again, such there is no law, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. So if you're in Jesus Christ, your flesh should be crucified. When He died, it should have died with Him on that cross, and the flesh. You know what? When he comes back, we're going to get a new body. So we won't have any sin at all then. But right now, till he comes, we still got this old nasty flesh that wants to do all kinds of nasty things. The mouth, everything. And you know what? We have to live in the Spirit and show other people a little glimpse of Jesus so they can get saved too. Amen? Amen. You, know, you know, people ask what they have to give up or trade to, trade to get saved. You know what? Don't even go there because you know what? What, why you want to get a church? What do you have to give up? You know what? You get heaven. You get Jesus Christ. You, you, you're you with the family of God. What are you giving up? Hangovers, drugs, alcohol, uh, wickedness, waking up and feeling terrible, sickness. You know, you're trading heaven for hell. You know, you're trading heaven for hell. You know, you're trading being with God for eternity or separated for God for eternity. You know, you're not giving up anything. You're gaining you know, it says, you know, so much better to be saved than to be lost. Amen? Amen. Look at John 5, 39 to 47. John 5, 39 to 47. Yeah, you're not missing anything. 
When you get saved, you're gaining. You're gaining the whole world. You're gaining eternal life. You're the family of God. Happiness. Peace comes to your heart. The peace that passes all understanding comes into your life. John 5, 39 to 47. It says, Search the Scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they that are which testify of me. You know what? Search. you got to search. you got to make sure you're right, you know. Search the Scriptures. In them you'll... You, it says, for, you, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. That's Jesus. Only through the glimpse of Jesus and through him can you get eternal life. And it says, and you will not come to me that you might have life. So some people aren't going to come. It's a free will. There's a lot of people who are not going to come. It says, narrow is the gate and straight is the path, and few did find it. So I don't know how much a few out of I don't know, three, billion, 3 billion people in the world or so. You know, a few. I don't know what a few is. A few, two, three, ten, twenty, I don't know, a thousand, ten thousand, I don't know. And you will not come to me, you might have life. I receive not honor from men. So God doesn't take honor from men. In the flesh, there's no honor. But I know you that you have not the love of God in you. It says, For I have come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. You know what? In the world, they'll start talking... Oh, Hinduism, Buddhism, people know nothing. Oh, I, I'm going to go to that class. I'm going to go do yoga, and we're going to chant chants and this. So I'm going to do that. People, I mean, people are deceived. People don't see the light. They go away from the light. They go to darkness. And it says, I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me. Not if another shall come in his own name, him will you receive. Oh, let's try out Buddhism. Let's try out uh, Hinduism. Let's try out... Uh, uh, you know, all different kinds of, uh, you know, false, false religions. It says, how can you believe which you receive honor from one another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? You know what? Only honor comes from God, and the only truth, the only truth comes from Jesus Christ, through, and it comes from the Father through him to you to the Holy Spirit. It says, do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuses you, even Moses, in whom you trust. So he was talking, you know, the Old Testament people, Moses gave them a warning, and they did. You know, he told them, you know, God. They, they were afraid of God because, you know, God. T he, they told them to t keep His commandments. They didn't keep none of His commandments, and they went away from God, and they're still away from God. And the only way to command Jesus is through My Son. This is My beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. You got to come through Jesus. You got to get a glimpse of Jesus. They need a glimpse of Jesus. It says, for had you believed Moses, you would have believed Me. So they would have believed Jesus, for he wrote of me. So Jesus said they wrote of him. It says, but if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? So he said, if you don't believe what Moses says, you're not going to believe me. And you know what? If they're lost, you know, they're not. They get a glimpse of Jesus, but they don't respond. You got to respond. When you get a glimpse of the light, you got to come closer to the light and get closer to the light. You get closer by studying the word, by praying, and get close. And you're right in the light, and the light shining. So, Lord, forgive me. You can't look no more. You got to be looking down. Lord, forgive me for my sins. Please forgive me. Save my soul. And you ask him, and he'll save you. You know, people, it's, it, you know, people... What, if people follow other people, people don't follow God. We should be following God. You know what? We need to study our Bible, follow God. You know, tell people, God's not like me. I'm a sinner. You watch me, I'm going to do something wrong. But my God is perfect, and he'll never let you down. He'll never forsake you. He'll never leave you. So you have to put tell people that, because a lot of people... They'll be uh, misled. They think because you know it's all oh, a Christian. They think that we're perfect, but we're not perfect. You know we got so we got to shine Jesus Christ to people. We got to give them a little glimpse of Jesus. Look at Acts seventeen ten through twelve. Acts seventeen ten through twelve. You know you got to search, seek, and you'll find. Acts seventeen ten through twelve. And it says, And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who cometh, coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. Therefore many of them believed also of honorable women, which were Greeks, and of men, just not a few. So here... They came in and they told they they gave Jesus a little glimpse of Jesus to these people and these people believed. 
But it says they were stu- readiness. They had their minds ready. They were ready to receive something. They were studying the scriptures daily to see who they were looking for in 18. It was the Messiah. Jesus fulfilled all this stuff, and they believed. And it says that there, therefore many of them believed, also of honorable women. So these are people who were, you know, dignitaries, you know, the, the, the congressmen, senators, people higher ups in, in, in the world. They believed too. You know, they were not, it says not a few, so there was all, yeah, you know, you know not, not many, but not a few, so there's quite a bit of people who believe. Let's look at First Chronicles, you know, we got to seek, you got to seek, First Chronicles 16, 8 through 12, First Chronicles 16, 8 through 12, First Chronicles 16, 8 through 12. You know, if these people could just get a little glimpse of Jesus in the world, they would see the light. They would turn from their darkness and turn to the light and ask him to save their souls. You know, if they don't realize we're going to go one day, you know, this life goes past. I'm, you know, I'll be 59 soon. I was just 18. My life's gone by. Thank God I trusted Jesus Christ. I know where I'm going when I die. First Chronicles 16, 8 through 12 says, Give thanks unto the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Oh, you got to make known it. He saved me, man. I, I was a wretched person. I was headed for hell. I, I, man, I man, I would have been in hell for eternity if it wasn't for God. He took away this, this, this. And it says, sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. So sing. Praise him. Tell him the wondrous works he's done. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord in his strength. Th- seek his face continually you know what you got to seek they got to seek we got to tell them you got to seek you know it's not you know what it's not the prayer uh pray after me one two three oh you're saved i, I am i am saved well yeah don't let nobody tell you you're not no you got to seek you got to seek yourself your own heart mind and soul study the scriptures and you got to find jesus you got to find the light you got to find him you can't let you know a lot of people they did they, they, oh he, you're saved you're not saved if you're not saved you know you're saved you know, you know. I know if I got a hundred dollars in my pocket, if I don't have a hundred dollars, I know that. So you got to know that. You got to tell people. You tell them. You you shine Jesus to them. You shine some of that light, a little glimpse of Jesus, and just tell them, Amen. Amen. Look at Lament, just Lamentations, uh, Lamentations three twenty five, Lamentations three twenty five. Jeremiah Lamentations, Lamentations 3.25. Actually, we could go from uh, go from 20 <coughs> Lamentations 3, 22 to 25. Lamentations 3, 22 to 25. It says, This uh, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. And it says, because his compassions fail not, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Isn't it great that God's faithful to us, that he doesn't just destroy us? Like God, you know, it's like an ant. You see an ant, you could kill it, but you, you know, sometimes you just let it, you let it go, you know? Yeah. And, it, and then it says here, the Lord is my portion, saith, saith my soul, therefore I will hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. You gotta seek him. You gotta wait on the Lord. A lot of things in this life, you gotta wait. When you're younger, you don't know how to wait. Oh, I'm gonna do this. God will bless me. And you may do something, God doesn't bless you. So you gotta wait. And as you get older, you remember, wait on the Lord. You know, something goes bad, okay, it's bad. It'll get fixed. You know, wait on God and you do it. And it says, It is it is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. You know, you wait. You wait on Jesus. You know what? You come to him. You come to the Lord. You ask him to forgive your sins. He died on the cross. He paid with his sins. He paid with his blood on the cross of Calvary. He paid his blood in his life for our sins. Let me correct that. Let me correct that. He didn't have no sin. Amen. Isaiah 55, 6 and 7. You know, Jesus is all over this Old Testament. Isaiah 55 
And I don't know why people can't see it. They're just blinded. Or they don't want to see it. You know, some people just don't want to see it. Some people just don't want to see Jesus. He's here. You get a little glimpse of him here. You know, if you want, if you want to look. Isaiah 55, 6 and 7. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. You know, he's not far from any one of us. It says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will, apart, apart, he will abundantly pardon. So he'll pardon you. He'll let you go. He'll, he'll, give, you, he'll give you salvation. But you got to forsake your way, turn to him, Forget, forget, ch- turn from everything you ever known, turn to Christ. He paid for it. You know, his, his ways are better than our ways, and he knows what's good for us. And you know what? We, we don't know. We don't know. But when you study God's word, that directs our path. The Holy Spirit directs our path because we're in God's word, and God directs our path. Look at 1 Samuel 25, 29, and 30. 1 Samuel. You know, there's a picture of Jesus all over the place. Everywhere I see him here. But other people can't. 1 Samuel 25. You know, when somebody gives me a piece of paper from a religion or something, I'm not afraid to read it because, you know what, I know the truth. Now, on something like witchcraft or something, I'm not all oh, dabble in this, say it, nah, 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 I'm not chanting nothing or nothing, yeah. Because in the flesh I could fall into something and we don't want that. 1 Samuel 25, 29, and 30. <coughs> Yet a man is risen to pursue thee and to seek thy soul. But the soul of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of life with the Lord thy God and the souls of thine enemies. And shall he sling out as out of the middle of a sling. And it shall come to pass when the Lord shall have done to my Lord according to all his good that he hath spoken concerning thee and shall appoint thee ruler over Israel. So he was talking about David here that, you know, David trusted in God. God, God. David did some things that were wicked against God. I mean, he had the uh, he had uh, the guy, the one guy, the man killed on the battlefield, and and uh, God, you know, he. But the thing is, he repented. He repented. That's the kind of heart we have to have. We're going to have troubles. We're going to have tribulation. We're going to do things wrong. We're going to do things that God's not going to be happy with. But if we come back and repent and ask Him to forgive, He will forgive. You know, we get a little glimpse of Jesus. He will forgive. Look at uh, Mark 12, 30 and 31. Yeah, a lot of people like the King James Bible. They say, oh, it's changed, or this is not the right version. You know, the Bible, I believe the Bible is the inspired, preserved word of God. You know, you know, it's it's inspired by God. You know, God, God want, told us through his through his word what we need to know about Jesus through his holy word. Mark twelve, thirty and thirty one. Mark twelve, thirty and thirty one. It says, And thou shalt love thy Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. You know what? We all fall short. You know, are you loving your neighbor? Are you, are you loving people who don't like you? You know what? We fall short. You know, we, you know what? We fall way short. But we shouldn't. We shouldn't. We shouldn't. We should love our neighbors. We should love people who don't like us. But you know how you love them? You tell them about Jesus. You know what? That's how you can win. You always win. Even if somebody hates you, you give them a gospel track. And if they take it, hey, you know what? The blood's off your hand. If they look at it, you never know. People you think would never trust God will trust God. You know, if they can just get a little glimpse of Jesus, and you might be the only person able to give them that little glimpse of Jesus. You know, you have to get it to them. You know, Jesus wants them saved too. Jesus, God died, God made every single one of us. Jesus Christ died for every single one of us, and he paid for our sin, so he wants to save them too. 
Can you give them a little glimpse of Jesus? You know what? It'll just be better for all. Amen. No. Uh, let's look at John 1.12. I just got a couple more verses. John 1.12. You know, we just got to give a little glimpse of Jesus out to people. We have to, you know, we've, we got to stay. We got to, this is end time. It's almost game over. And, you know, the devil knows that. So he's trying to latch as many people away. We need to work to get people, tell them about Jesus Christ, that he loves them. He wants to save them. Amen. How to get saved. We got to tell them. And it says, but as many as received them to them, gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that were that believe on his name. You know, we're the sons of God, and anybody can become a son of God if you believe on his name. You know, let's look at Romans 10, 9 and 10. Romans 10, 9 and 10. Romans 10, 9 and 10. X, Romans. Romans 10, 9 and 10. Is that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And it says, For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. So we can't be ashamed. We've got to tell people. You know, it says, Trust, if thou shalt confess... If people confess with their mouths the Lord Jesus and believe in their heart that God raised them from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You know, with your heart you believe on the God's righteousness, and with the mouth you make a confession unto salvation. Hey, I want to serve God. I want to. I want people. I want to tell people about Jesus Christ. I want them to know too. Amen. So you know, you know, are you telling others? That's the main thing. We got to tell others. You know, we got to be happy in Jesus. You know, time's coming to an end. Let's look at 20, this is Matthew 24, 6. This is it, Matthew 24, 6. Matthew 24, 6. You know, time's almost over. Jesus could come back tonight. We got to tell people, we got to warn them. It says, and you shall hear of wars and of rumors of war. See that you... See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. You know, the end is not yet. Once every single person's heard a pure gospel presentation that the Lord Jesus Christ died for them, that God raised them from the dead, and he paid for their sins, he shed his blood. Once they hear that, I, I don't know, maybe God the Father's going to tell them to come back. But these people need to hear. All these things are happening now. We need to wake up, smell the coffee. It's high time. It's time to get busy. It's time to shine for Jesus more than ever. You know, we got we to gotta preach, teach. And last verse, 24, 14. This is it. I, I got to end on this. Matthew 24, 14. And the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. So you know what? Once everybody's heard... They got no excuse, but we got to tell them. You got to give them a little glimpse of Jesus. You know, it's either darkness or light. They make the decisions. We're just here. We're, we're just ambassadors for Christ trying to tell them. We have to be ambassadors. Amen? Amen. Let's be ambassadors for Jesus. Dear Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you for, for loving us and dying for us and paying for our sins on the cross. Thank you for shedding your blood. And, and Lord, thank you for leading us and guiding us. And thank you for the church here. Thank you for these people. Bless them, Lord. Watch over us. Keep us safe and in your will, Lord. And I pray that we can be used for you to tell others about you. I pray that they can get a little glimpse of Jesus, a little glimpse of you, Lord, from us, Lord. I pray that you just help us with our needs and any faults we have. We ask you to forgive them and just be with us and continue using us till you come. In Jesus' precious name, amen. amen. All right, we're going to sing song number... It says, so happy in Jesus. Uh... When you walk with the Lord, what song is that? In the light of His Word, what a it's trust and obey. Right? Trust oh, and obey. Yes, yes, yes. There we go. I know you had it. Thank you. What number? What number? Uh, no, I don't know. Forty. Again. Hold on. Trust and obey. So we need to trust and obey Jesus. Forty. Forty. Page number forty. Song number forty. 
When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory He sheds on the way. While we do His good will, He abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the skies, but his smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt or a fear, not a sign or a tear, can abide while we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but our toll he doth richly repay. Not a grief nor a loss, not a frown or a cross, but is blessed if we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. But we never can prove the delights of His love unto all on the altar is laid. For the favor He shows and the joy He bestows are for them who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Then in fellowship sweet we shall sit at His feet or we'll walk by His side in the way. What He says we will do, where He sends we will go. Never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. We got to trust, obey His word, and trust, obey Him. Amen. Amen. And you know, Amen. we got to spread our happiness. You know, like I said, this life's going to go through. We're going to have our, you know, tribulations and trials. But be of good cheer, smile, because Jesus overcame the world, and we can overcome the world. Amen. 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 Steve Sajak, Texas. <laughs> Danny Curtis in uh, where is he? He's Muskegon, Michigan, with his dogs and. Uh, a lot of people. We love people. We love so many. Pastor Stiller and his family, Pastor uh, Harbin and uh, Pastor Thomas, Mrs. Thomas down in Texas, Rogers Baptist Church, Pastor Gilbert's family. You know, you know, we need to pray. We need to pray for people. Stephen, Mr. Lurleen's son, we love these people, man. We want them in church. We want Miriam, John, Miss C, everybody come to church. Come on. Even yeah. Derek. We want to see him saved. Amen. 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 We want to trust Amen. Jesus. You know what? You got to trust the Lord. And that's the only way to have true happiness in this life. And then it's the only way to have true happiness for eternity. Amen. Amen. So let's let's pray for people. You know, somebody's on your heart. Pray for them. Pray for the police. We got to pray to police. The firemen, all these people. I was seeing so many fire and police yesterday. They got a hard job. We need to pray that God protects them. And, you know, they're serving us. They're serving people. They're just, they're just normal people like you and me doing a job. And yeah. you know what? They're trying to do right. You know, may God bless them and watch over them and keep them safe in his will. Again, let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you for the services today. Thank you for these people. Bless them, Lord. I pray that you just be with us now as we go our separate ways. And, and just guide us your way, that we would trust and obey you. And you bless us, Lord, and watch over us and keep us safe and in your will. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, in the city of our God, in the mountain of His holiness. 
beautiful for situation. The joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the side to the north, the city of the great king. Well, praise God. Have a good weekend. Stay warm until we see you again Friday. If Amen. not, here, there, in the air, we'll see you somewhere. Amen. Praise the Lord. Stay warm. Stay cool. <laughs> yeah, that's...